Hello everybody, welcome back. So we are still working in reading on the same learning target. I can determine a, uh, let me start over. I can determine the theme to a piece of literature. All right, and specifically the literature that we're working with right now is poetry. It is National Poetry Month, the month of April. So be, I thought it'd be a great time to kind of focus on poetry a little bit as we try to continue our discussion with about theme. So part of poetry, um, is that it uses things called figurative language. And we have been calling all year long that figurative language is our power lines in our classroom. So far, we've reviewed simile, comparing two things with the keywords like or as. Yesterday, we talked about metaphor. Metaphor is when you compare two things, but you don't use keywords. All right, you just say it out there and you act like that's what it is. Today, we're going to talk about, I think, probably your favorite one, if I remember correctly, things like this. Boom, beep, zoom, tweet, bang, slam, hop, zip, buzz. What is all of this? You know what it is. Tell me, yell it. I think I almost heard you. Onomatopoeia, onomatopoeia. Now, why would a poet, a poet or any author use onomatopoeia? Hmm, I wonder. All right, it's gonna definitely add more of an image, okay? We want that imagery to come through, that ability to, for the author to paint that picture. If you remember way back when we were together, Mrs. Dunn would always tell us that as a writer, as an author, you can control someone's thoughts and someone's emotions all right, by what you write. Well, that's exactly what a poet wants to do. Somebody who writes poetry wants to be able to tap into your feelings. And somebody mentioned that. It tells a story about someone's feelings. Poetry, probably more than any other type of literature, targets how a person feels. That tone or that mood that we've been talking about really comes into play. And this figurative language helps with that, including onomatopoeia, these fun words right here. So today in small group, we're going to work a little bit with onomatopoeia. All right, and then you need to come up with your own example of onomatopoeia. So you might want to take a look at these. You might want to pause me and write some of these down because in a little bit you're going to have to figure out an example of your own onomatopoeia. All right? And I will explain more about that in small group when we meet today. All right? That is it for me for right now. You're going to pause me, go meet me in small group, and do the things I have for you for reading. But then you're going to come back to the same video so I can talk to you a little bit about writing for today. All right? So pause me for now, but don't forget to come back. All right? Go. Alright, so our learning target that we've been working on with writing is I can write an opinion paper that supports a point of view. Yesterday, we wrote... Apparently someone's at the door. Okay, so I'm not sure how much of that craziness she caught. The dogs went crazy. Mr. Dunlop went outside. The dogs went nuts. I guess they thought he was a stranger. He is a little odd. He is a little strange, but he's not a stranger. So we're all good now, I think, for now. All right, so back to what I was saying, opinion paper. All right, so yesterday you wrote a paragraph about your opinion on the book, How to Steal a Dog. You were to write about and tell me if you liked it or you didn't like it. All right, and the important part that you need to remember is that when you give an opinion, no matter what it is, you have to back that up with facts, okay? In this situation, you'd be backing that up with specific examples from the text as best as you can without having the text in front of you. So that's what you were supposed to do yesterday. And I encourage you to write down on a piece of paper because it just makes your life easier. If you did a Google Doc, not a problem, you're still gonna be able to do the next step. The next step is to share that opinion with us. I have a flip grid set up. You are going to record yourself sharing your opinion. Now, be careful. I want you to look at us in the camera like I'm looking at you right now but I want you to share what you have read or have written. So basically I want you to read your paragraph is what I'm trying to say, all right? So if you're going to have your paragraph here and you're gonna read it, then you're gonna read it, but also try to have eye contact. So here's what I think you should do first. Get that paragraph out from yesterday. Practice reading it a few times, all right? Read it to yourself in the mirror. Read it to a brother or a sister. Read it to mom or dad. Practice reading it a few times so that when you go to record yourself on Flipgrid, you're able to read it and still look up and have eye contact with us. 
Make sense? All right. If you wrote it on a Google Doc, you're just going to have to hit record and go to the next uh, tab and have to kind of go back and forth. It should still work, I think, okay? If you open up it in a different tab on a Google Doc and it will just still record it, you can read it from your, your camera. I've not tried it, so I hope it works. If not, you might have to write it out after all. Mm -hmm. We'll work on it together. All right, if you have any questions, let me know. You're gonna go ahead and stop me. You're gonna go back to your assignment page and there is a link on there for the Flipgrid for how to steal a dog opinion. All right, in the meantime, if you have any questions, let me know. Don't forget about vocabulary as well. You should be working on opinion writing on that this week as well. All right, let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you later, bye. Hot <laughs> <laughs>